Okay, so in today's tutorial, we're gonna be making an easy sci-fi tunnel render. Let me show you what it looks like and then we'll get into it. All right, so this is the render we're gonna be making right here. It's It looks complicated, but it's quite simple. I'm gonna break it down for you. Um, on a side note, this is my Instagram right here. If you wanna send this render to me, if you make it, that'd be awesome. I love seeing you guys' work. So let's get into it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is hit Shift A and we're gonna be getting a cube. All right, now right over here, let's go to our transform settings. And right here on the Y, we're just gonna stretch it out just a little bit. Right about there, that's gonna be pretty good. Now let's hit tab for edit mode. And right up here, we're gonna choose face select. Select this face, hold down shift, select that face, then hit X. And we're gonna click faces. And that will remove those faces for us. All right, now we need to bevel this right here. So we're gonna be using the bevel modifier. So let's go over to our modifiers, add, and then bevel. And then right here on the width, you can just change it just like that. So I'm gonna to wanna to do right about there that looks pretty good and we're going to apply it all right now what we're going to want to do is take this hit shift d duplicate it go back to our transform settings and let's take the y and just scale it down to right about this thickness because we're going to be making these sort of side panels that you see right down here and right here so we're going to take that and we're going to bring it all the way to the end all right now we're going to add a solidify modifier so right here and we're just gonna bring it in to right about that thickness and we're going to apply that now let's take this here select the bottom right click and let's subdivide it and we're gonna subdivide it three times now make sure this is still selected we're gonna go over here to inset faces so right up here we're gonna click individual and we're just going to inset them right about there. And then we're going to hit E for extrude. And we're just going to extrude it down just like that. And now we have a nice... I'm going to put a mat cap on here real quick so we can see what's going on a little bit better. Maybe put a metal mat cap on it. All right, so now you can see what's going on. And let's add an array modifier to this. Actually, actually let's add a little bit more design here. Let's hit tab again, select these panels, holding down shift. And what we'll do is we'll inset these two as well, bringing it down and then hit E, S, and then just drag it out just like that. Now we have these sort of window type things. Now let's add our array modifier. So let's add the array. It's bringing it that way and we don't want that. So I believe it would be, yes, this middle one right here. So give it about the width you want. I'd give it right about that. I think that'll be kind of what I'm going for here yeah and on the count just up your count until it passes up your tube just like that nothing uh, nothing too crazy now let's add a plane shift a add our plane and then bring it down and then in our transform settings right over here we're gonna take the Y and scale it all the way and this will be the floor because right now if we don't have that we just have these big dents and imagining this as a hallway, you can't walk there. So we're going to add a floor, select it, and let's just bring it up kind of like that, giving us a nice floor. And now we have that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the original cube here, duplicate it again. I'm going to hit tab, hit A to make sure it's all selected, right click, subdivide, and we're going to subdivide it quite a bit. I think giving it 15, maybe 20 subdivisions, that looks really good. And we're gonna throw a wireframe modifier on that. So go back to your go back to your modifiers, add modifier, and wireframe. And now you can kind of see what's going on here. We got pretty good design already. All right, now we're gonna add these tubes right here. So we're gonna go shift A, curve, and add a path. Take this path and we need to rotate it so go to our transform settings right here on rotation and rotate it by 90 degrees on the z-axis and we're just going to scale it up until it passes up our object here and let's go over to the NURBS path settings here on geometry we're going to give the depth quite a bit not that much though we'll give it we'll put the depth at one and we'll scale it down here, bring it to the edge here, 
just like that. I'm going to scale it just like that. So we're just barely on the edge and bring it up. Perfect. All right, now we have this one. Let's just shift D, duplicate it, bring it up, bring it here, and take the middle one here again, shift D, bring it down, and then bring it here to the side. So just doing it just like that. And that looks pretty good for our tubes. All right, so let's make sure we're in the EV render engine. So hit the camera on cycles. We're going to change it to EV, hit Z, and go to look dev so we can kind of see what we're dealing with. And let's start shading this mainly with metallic shaders. So let's take these brackets here, add a new shader, make it metallic. And now let's select the wireframe, make that metallic. We're going to make it pretty dark right around here. We'll take this outside one here, make that one metallic, just like that. Keep it around the same, the default white base color. And then these three, we're going to add a metallic shader to that one as well and add the same one to those tubes and the floor of course new and we'll put the same shader that the tubes have which is material 4 on that actually material 3 and now we have the base of pretty much what we got going on looks pretty good we need to add some lights so shift a and we will add a light We'll make it an area light. Now you can't see it, obviously, because we are in look dev mode. So let's hit Z and hit to rendered, and now it's way too bright. I'm going to turn off bloom right now. If you're wondering about the EV settings for this, you're going to want volumetric screen space reflections, bloom, and ambient occlusion on. But I'm going to turn it off for now because it's overpowering the scene. We'll give it a power of two and then turn bloom back on. All right, now we have some fun stuff to play with. So I want this light to sort of light up the whole thing. Right now it's just here in the middle. Very simple fix. We're just going to go and, sh <clears throat> and stretch it out here on the Y. Just like that. And now we have the light spanning the whole scene. Now we have a light coming down, but we have nothing visually telling us what is emitting that light. So we need to create a light. So a little simple trick here. We're going to go over to Mesh add a new plane, bring it up here, just like that. I'm going to scale it down. And so let's take it and let's subdivide it. So hit tab, right click, subdivide. And so you can sort of imagine it. Each of those squares is going to be a light. So I'm going to put it right about there. Now go to edit, operator search, and type in edge split. Edge split. Perfect. So visually didn't do anything, but what it did was it cut all these edges. And if you go to the modifiers and you add a smoothing modifier, now it cuts all those and let's add a solidify to that. And now we have our lights. Now we just need to add an emission texture, emission shader to it. New principle change to emission and give it a strength of three. Now we have our lights. Pretty cool. Pretty dandy. Now let's just now let's just bring it here to the edge and we're going to eyeball where it needs to go so right above the the wireframe just like that now when i was designing this i was trying to just use an array modifier to bring it all the way like that but it didn't quite work so just duplicate it a couple times just like that and then put it in these areas and just like that the the wireframe just didn't place them in a very even way it just was it didn't work mathematically with my with what I did but if you just do that now you have your lights and it makes sense to where the light is actually coming from all right last thing we want to do is go over to the lights at a point light make it red we're just gonna put this red point light just to add some visual interest into the scene just like that and we're gonna take our area light here give it a slightly blue tint just like that. And now let's go and make these metallic shaders a bit darker because the bloom is just overtaking it. And when you have that problem, it usually means your shaders need to be a bit darker. So you see, once we make it darker, it looks much, much better. All right, now we need to add some stuff going on with these textures because right now they're just perfectly smooth and we want to change that. So in Blender 2.8, we have these presets. Let's click the shading preset 
and let's go and add some fun stuff. So go to rendered Z and let's add a bump node. Plug the normal into the normal and let's add a noise texture just like that. Plug the color into the height and bring up the detail and bring down the strength of this. And now we have some bumpiness going on. I'm just going to take this noise texture, duplicate it, and plug it into the vector just to give it a little bit more detail in, in this noise texture. And let's bring up the distortion. So now we have some cool stuff right here on our floor plane. Let's add a new texture. Let's add a bump right here on the normal and a brick texture. Plug that into the height. And now we have this little brick stuff going on for the floor. Makes sense for the visual aspect of this. So works really well. And it also adds that texture to these tubes here and it looks really cool. I'm a huge fan of how that sort of happened randomly. And you know, a little happy accident there. All right, now let's go in and add a camera. But first, click on this world icon and bring down all the way to black on our world settings. And let's set up our scene the way we want it to look. So right about here looks pretty good. Shift A, add a camera. Control Alt Zero snaps the camera to view. Make sure your camera's selected. We're gonna go to the camera settings on focal length, change it to 35. That kind of changes it to a 35 millimeter lens and makes it more wide angle. All right. We have one problem and that there's nothing here and we want this tube to go much farther. So all we have to do, I'm going to hide the camera so I'm not selecting it. And I'm gonna hit B for box select. Selecting it all, click M, new collection, and just name it something random, doesn't matter. And now we have the scene collection. Now we're gonna do the thing called instancing. So Shift A, collection instance, click it. And I'm gonna hold down Shift so it just kind of snaps and there we go collection instance and we'll duplicate that instance all the way down the line for however far you want it so you could just add array modifiers on all those objects but this is a much easier and less strenuous on your computer way to do it and now you have the super long tube going all the way down and it works really well now for your render settings i'm just going to render it at 1920 by 1080 you can do whatever size you want and then right up here, render, render image. And there you go, this is the render that I got once I hit render. So as you can see, I did some other post-processing in Photoshop, but everything, all the models and the lighting is done in Blender. Again, if you make this, send it to me on Instagram, I'd love to see it, and thanks for watching.